On a Sunday, we met up at the designated spot at 6.30 a.m. and started our ride towards Kanakpura. The weather was cool and the morning drizzle was slowly subsiding. As adventure riders, many of us go out there to explore places with a lot of optimism and enthusiasm. Sometimes we are rewarded with unforgettable experiences, while other times there won't be much to remember about the ride or the place of visit. Such is the world of adventure motorcycling. This ride turned out to be one of my most epic ones yet. This ride was planned at the last minute. A good friend Vijay and I had signed up for an off-road training organized by KTM Academy at Big Rock Dirt Park, which was scheduled on the same Sunday. However, on Saturday evening, news came in that the track was unrideable due to incessant rains. So the training was moved to the following weekend. As a rider, I suddenly had a hollow feeling because I was looking forward to some adventure the following day and that adventure had been postponed. Vijay pinged me to check if I was open to riding to someplace else on Sunday. As I was mentally prepared to ride the following day, change of location didn't matter much and I said I was in. Vijay suggested Dabbaguli. This was a location which was on my cards for quite some time now. Vijay and I are part of KDM 390 Adventure Group on WhatsApp and several others from the group had signed up for the training. We thought it would be a good idea to let people know on the group that we were planning a ride the next day so that anyone interested could join us. One person from the group, Ashik, confirmed that he would join us for the ride. Vijay and Ashik were riding the spork wheel version of 390 Adventure and I was riding the X which has alloys. I have mentioned in one of my previous videos that I wanted a versatile and practical motorcycle and that's how I ended up with the 390 Adventure X. On the practical aspect, I wasn't too concerned about my motorcycle on this ride but I was praying that the other two don't have a puncture because that would be a hassle for all. Later, I learned from Vijay that he carries a tube sealer which when filled in a punctured tube would plug the hole and also inflate the tube which would allow him to travel a couple of hundred kilometers to get to a puncture repair shop. However, there was only one of those tube sealers and four tube type tires mounted on spoke trims. So, my prayers were still on. On the versatility front, all the avatars of the 390 Adventure shine. We treaded on smooth tarmac, broken roads, off-road, rocky surfaces and twisties and the 390 Adventure sure put a smile on my face yet again. Vasuhi managed to put a smile on a lot of other faces too, as you will see. When riders of different skill levels ride together is when the pack gets slowed down. Thankfully, all three of us were experienced riders and that helped us to cover ground swiftly. This really adds to the overall experience of the ride and I was glad that my ride had started on a good note. We reached Kanakpura by 7-ish and had breakfast. After the sumptuous breakfast, we resumed our ride, exited Kanakpura Road onto Kodi Early Road and I almost crashed into Vijay before we got lost. I almost rear ended into you. Huh? Almost rear ended into you. A wrong turn got us on the wrong road and despite having maps, we were lost. Thanks to that, we got a tour of one of the villages and after completing the full circuit of the village, we finally started on the road towards the Bagui. Soon, we reached the start point of the first leg of trails. Rear ABS off and I took off. As good as I am with my skills on road, it is almost the exact opposite when off the road. However, I have been practicing off-road techniques and that really showed during this ride. I rode with a lot of confidence this time. I wasn't riding too fast but was focusing mainly on riding off-road the right way and using the correct techniques. In one of my previous rides to Asad Khan's training in slushy terrain, I realized the need for tires which work better off-road. So, a couple of weeks ago, I installed the Rice Moto Trail R tire at the rear and that helped me a lot in terms of confidence. These are 50-50 tires and they help me with better traction and braking.
After the first leg of off-road, we hit the tarmac again. A very scenic road with almost no traffic. We were cruising at a decent speed and then this happened. Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. A bird collided with me. It was too quick and before I could react in any way, the collision happened. The bird hit my number plate and crashed on the road. I hit a bird. Let me just check on it. I turned around to check on the bird and saw that it had sustained an injury. When I first saw it lying injured on the road, I had a sinking feeling in my gut. At first, it appeared as though the bird had broken its neck, but it was blinking and that put me in more stressed state. What if the bird had broken bones? We were not even in a position to take it to a vet. Thankfully, it didn't have a broken neck as you can see. Ashik helped move the bird to the side of the road and once there, the bird shut its eyes fully. The sinking feeling continued and just then, Ashik thought of reviving the bird by giving it some water. As soon as he poured some water on the beak of the bird, it showed signs of movement. He drank a lot of water and every passing minute was giving us hope. Pardon the sniffling sound, I was recovering from a cold. While all this was happening, I was struck by a thought of how life is different for every other creature on the planet as compared to us humans. When humans get hurt, there's a tendency to yell and scream due to the pain. The bird was quiet. We immediately rushed to help humans in distress. But this poor bird was at the mercy of nature. It was as if the bird was trying to gain strength by staying quiet. I remembered something which I had read long back. An archaeologist was asked about when civilization had started. The archaeologist replied that it wasn't when we built tools and mud utensils. The archaeologist had found fossil of human bone which was fractured and then yield. Nature is harsh, so the weak and injured don't survive for long. Someone else cared enough to stay and nurse the injured person till the fracture healed. That care for each other was the start of civilization according to that archaeologist. Maybe that's why we consider other species to be uncivilized. But we will never know the true meaning of civilization. As civilized as we may be considered, we inflict some terrible and hostile stuff to fellow humans and other species. Eventually, the bird hopped onto its feet and took its first step. I was praying that the bird would be able to fly again. Just then, it took flight. What a relief. I was overjoyed. It flew and was perched on a nearby shrub. Maybe it needed more healing time. I was glad that we were able to help the bird revive. I'm eternally grateful to Ashik for being a savior that day. Reviving of the bird has etched a beautiful memory in my memory bank. Assumed our ride and finally reached the check post from where the final trail to Tabaguli starts. After paying an entry fee of 30 rupees per motorcycle, we were let in and another leg of wonderful off-road started. I had a lot of fun on this stretch, splashing water and riding over small ruts. From time to time, there was a reminder of the danger, as I could see fresh elephant dung on the train.
soon. Without any incidents, all of us reached the banks of River Kaveri. We halted here for a bit to take in the scenery and also rest it out because after this would be the return journey on the same path. Vijay surprised us to this. The combination of the sound of the flute and the scenery was mesmerizing. We met a local there, Rajappa, who invited us to have some fish curry which he had just cooked. Vijay and I being vegetarians politely declined the invitation, but Ashik relished the fish curry. During our conversation with Rajappa, we learned that there is another route out of this place. We decided to explore and set out towards that route only to ride off into the jungle and realize that we had taken the wrong route. As we were making our way back towards the correct route, I hit a stump in the ground and damaged my brake pedal. Thankfully, no functional damage was done and I was able to use the brake, somewhat, with a weird foot movement. Eventually, we found the correct route. The priest at the temple told us that normally this is a restricted route as it goes through core forest, but the forest officials had given permission to the general public to use it for two days. That sparked some confidence in us. Normally, if you are found trespassing in restricted forest areas, you can be taken in and charged with a non bailable offence. It is fascinating how our brain works. What was a restricted area with the danger of wild animals was now an adventure where we could tread with confidence just because someone told us that it was fine to go there. No evidence of the relaxation in rules, yet we went by face value and rode on this path. Permission or no permission, this was turning out to be an epic ride. Even though I was riding with street-worthy riding gear, the weight of the gear, the lack of ventilation, the heat, nothing bothered me. It was as if I was in a trance while riding on this path. I rode slowly and carefully because each turn could present unexpected events. While this place is known for elephants, we did not spot any. I spotted a couple of chitar. We were told that this path to the check post was only about 2 kilometers, but we kept riding for what felt like a lot longer. The terrain was constantly changing and we were enjoying every bit of it. Soon, we came across a water crossing. The boulders over which the water flowed looked unreal. It looked as if the boulders were created for a movie scene. We all crossed the water crossing without any incident and were immediately surprised by a huge cobra crossing our path. Vijay didn't notice the snake, but crossed it without running over it. No sooner than he had crossed the snake, it suddenly assumed the attacking posture momentarily, and then realizing there was no danger, the snake took to its path and slid away into the nearby bushes. We continued on and went back into trance mode. We were up close to raw nature, and it is beyond words to explain what went on in our minds as we rode further. After riding for nearly 30 minutes and covering close to 15 kilometers, we finally reached the check post, only to realize that we were not permitted to ride through the forest. We were sort of busted. We got an earful from the forest officer for having trespassed, and thanks to my non-existent negotiation skills, the matter escalated. Once again, Ashik came to our rescue. He can speak Tamil. And after several apologies to the officer, we were finally allowed to pass. Later, the guard told us that this is a very dangerous area and a couple of days back, one person was trampled to death by a tusker. We counted our blessings and scooted from there. On the way back, we stopped in a village to hydrate ourselves 
and a bunch of kids came to us with a lot of excitement. They posed for the camera, started Vasuli and wrapped him to their heart's content. I was just happy that I could put a smile on the faces of those kids. We started our return journey from there and rode through some beautiful scenery and lovely roads with a lot of twisties. This ride was definitely one of the most satisfying rides I had till date. And I don't think I will ever get another opportunity to pass by this particular forest road as it is off limits to civilians. It is forever going to be embedded in my memory. Isn't this what life is about? Now, be civilized and show some love and care by liking and sharing the video and subscribing to my channel.